Fellas, say goodbye to Chuck Sherman the boy. I am now a man. I highly recommend you join the club. We are doing the wild thing all night. Taxi house music. Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Sherman. Sherman, I cook all this food. Is that all you gonna eat? General Sherman realized and understood the importance of house music. So, do you know anything about techno? No. Listen. Get it on. Hey, hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another brand new episode of Sherm in the Booth. I'm, of course, your host, Sherm. Today is Wednesday, August 28th, 2019. Guys, this is episode 77077. We are fresh up a hot week of five episodes in a row, but you know I'm not going to slow down now. This week's episode features none other than the lovely Hummingbird. Now, this is someone that I've seen many times in Chicago at some of the biggest and best clubs. This is the first time I was able to shake hands with her, and it was such a profound interview she is a very special person and i gotta say she's someone who looks at this a little bit differently than the rest you guys are going to hear just how passionate she is we got really really deep with music with how it makes you feel with the connection of the crowd but she is a professional guys you're going to hear that in the mix after the interview i don't want to spoil any surprises let's just get into it right now guys make sure you stick around again after the interview for her amazing guest mix but let's get into it episode 77 with hummingbird Miss Kelly Richards, a.k.a. Hummingbird, thank you so much for coming on Sherman the Booth. I really appreciate making some time. Uh, I've been a big fan of you for quite some time. Um, I think I've been following you for like two years at least. Okay. Because I came to Chicago four years ago and really didn't like get into the quote-unquote industry scene probably until two years after that. I mean, to come to Chicago, not have any connections already... You really just got to go out there. It's kind of funny when yeah. we were talking before we were on air, yeah. you're like, that's my least favorite thing. Yeah. That's like my favorite thing, actually. <laughs> we're all so different. <laughs> uh, it's that's okay. Why. Opposites <laughs> attract. So yep. I, uh, I am at, I'm trying to remember where I saw you first. It must have been Spy Bar. How long have you been DJing at Spy Bar? When was like your first gig there? Spy Bar was actually my first club gig. Really? No way. Yeah. That's upper echelon. Yeah. When was that? What year? That was 2000 and... 13? 2013? Nice. Yeah. Do you was, remember that show? It's got to be. I, of course. Of course. Yeah, and it was funny because it was like, back then it was like, well, I want to, my, my, one of my New Year's resolutions was like, I'm going to play, I want to play a gig in like an actual real mm-hmm. venue, mm-hmm. like a proper gig. Right. Because um, up to that point it had been, like I had the time I had a lot of artist friends and um, I was playing gallery events and friends house parties and you know, kind of like how yeah, we all course. start DJing. It's of course. Like, and um, I actually started DJing because I was, I got into production first. Mm-hmm. Um, and, but yeah, so it was, people were like, well, you play really good music, you should DJ. And so like, <laughs> then I started doing that for like a year and then people were like, well, why don't you play out somewhere like mm-hmm. a real, and I was like, well, that's a cool idea too. You know, it was like, mm-hmm. it was just like, I've played music my whole life. The DJing thing was kind of new, and yeah, and so Found a that, place. and so then like lo and behold, that was like the first proper gig. Like you think it'd be like some like corner bar or something. But, yeah, like that's pretty. I mean, legit. And I played my share of those in my day as well. Yeah, but, like absolutely. it was, it was. Um, you don't only get good gigs. Like you also have to know what's a bad gig to know it's a good gig, right? And you've got to play them all you because do. it's it's like playing the like crappy gigs on crappy gear to nobody. Or to a crowd that it, it, it's to different crowds, you learn so much about mm-hmm. understanding the energy of the room and communicating with the dance floor, mm-hmm. and you know, being able to kind of build the energy and draw different groups of people in. Yeah, that's like the, you learn so much from every experience in life. Yeah, right? so absolutely. It's like the great gigs feel awesome, but like the bad gigs, you know, are the ones that <laughs> like you know are like in a weird spot. Like yeah, those are sometimes also amazing teachers. Yeah, so. absolutely. I mean, I always say like you have to make mistakes to learn from them so sometimes in those like maybe not as like high pressure situations you know I guess like a spy bar not as high pressure but like a a bar gig I can try a few different things out there or whatever it might be different times of the night too like I've played my fair share of gigs that are 9 to 10 or 11 and then like a 2 to 3 to 4 you know so it's like you said when you played that track um, 
and you were like, oh man, I haven't played this track in so long. And you're like, I had the room and you waited for that. And that yeah. was finally your time to try yeah, it, right? Yeah. So it's crazy how those like random instances of gigs just come out at the right times, right? right. And you think back, oh yeah, this is the time. Yep. So you came from Wisconsin. Where was Wisconsin are you from? Um, outside of Milwaukee. Outside of Milwaukee? Yeah. Did you go to Chicago a lot? Yeah, I did. I, I, rem- I actually, in, in high school, I was in like an advanced placement European history class. Wow. And the teacher took us down to, I'm, I'm a nerd. Um, <laughs> That's okay. I own it now. I used to like try and be like, <laughs> yeah. now, now I'm just like, well, yeah, I'm, I'm, Absolutely. I'm, I'm, I'm a nerd and I read books on <laughs> science in my spare time. Um, <laughs> but... Um, but yeah, I remember like we went, came down here on a trip to the Art Institute because mm-hmm. obviously so much of culture is represented in its art. Yeah, and absolutely. And really, really awesome teacher. And I remember walking through the streets down here and I was like, I need to live somewhere mm-hmm. where the buildings are so tall that the sun doesn't shine on the streets. Wow. I, and I, I was like, I was that was like my junior year of high school where yeah. I was like, yep, I'm living somewhere like this. I know. And for the people who maybe have never even been to Chicago or Milwaukee, like they're only 90, 100 miles apart, but so much different. I mean, mm-hmm. you go over the border of Wisconsin, <laughs> and it's like everything changes. I mean, yeah. everything changes. And it's actually, it's it's so humbling. Like, I've lived in Chicago, so I'm not necessarily from Chicago. But, like, to go up and down and, like, see life in Wisconsin and all the differences here in Chicago, it makes you appreciate different things. Like, coming from Indiana, I thought the same thing. I, yeah. went to, I grew up in Indiana. I went to college in Indiana. I was like, get me to some high rises. <laughs> like, I can't do the cornfields anymore. Yeah. I can't do the cows. Oh, like, no more picket fences. Yeah. Like, concrete jungle. I want to yeah. take the train everywhere. I don't want to have a car. I want to ride my bike. You're just, yeah, you're either somebody who, if you grow up in more of a rural area, mm-hmm. you either stay there and love it, yeah. or you are the opposite, and you're just you you're just craving a different kind of experience. I know. And now, both are correct. Yeah, absolutely. And I have plenty of friends that still live in Indiana. I have mm-hmm. friends that haven't even been on a plane before, or like, mm-hmm. you know, been outside the country or anything, and like, it kind of keeps me grounded in some way, yeah. you know? Like, I talk to them, and we share our experiences, and... Sometimes, like, with the busy life of a DJ producer and a real job, like, yeah. you know, you, like, like, one of my friends, he just told me, I was like, what did you do this week? And he was like, not much, man. I honestly just watched a movie with my girlfriend. I'm like, what is that like? I don't know the What last is time that I, yeah. like? <laughs> you did what? You just watched a movie? Okay. Wow. You know? And it just, like, puts you, puts your life in perspective. But yeah. I think that's what kind of makes, like, you know, the industry life, the music life so special is because it is so much different. It's such a creative industry where you can share ideas and then learn from the people who aren't doing the same thing. Right. And it's interesting because like you can take so much inspiration Mm -hmm. from like for me, one of my big sources of inspiration is what I refer to as the collective, Mm -hmm. which is um, just kind of a term used to describe humanity at large. Yes. And um, all of the, the common challenges that we all face Mm -hmm. regardless of race gender culture Mm -hmm. nationality and I love like I love traveling I love um I just I love people there's like such a deep love for me like Mm -hmm. in me for 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 humanity yeah and the challenges that we all kind of go through in our lives, Mm -hmm. you go through those emotions and those inner struggles, whether you live in a small town in Wisconsin, or you live in Manhattan, or you live in Egypt, Mm -hmm. or Hong Kong, right? There's, that's what unites us. And I think that's like what, you know, that's like, I I find so much inspiration in that Mm -hmm. and kind of weaving of that together. And Mm -hmm. it like, metaphorically, that's also what music does and what dance music does. It's just this uniting, beautiful energy it's crazy like when when you go to other countries or when other people you know we were just talking about the soul made crew coming over here and then finding people in chicago who yeah. share a similar love of music and yeah. then to share that with different cultures around the world is so unique mm-hmm. and like that's my favorite part about electronic music house and techno and tech house specifically yeah just because the the dancing and you know like yeah. you were talking about sweat on the ceilings and yep. stuff like you don't get that everywhere else no. and that's probably my favorite part about Chicago is just you know it's it's a melting pot but also we're all in the same pot 
Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I, I absolutely love that. Have you been to um, any of the um, parties, like Chosen Few block parties or anything like that? We went to one of those, yes. Yeah. They're crazy. I mean, like, people don't even know. Like, you think Chicago festivals, you think Lollapalooza or something like that, you know? There's so many big house music festivals here that go on and, like, Right, the and with their own it. vibe and yeah. community, and that's what I think is so beautiful. It's mm-hmm. like, it's like I love going to places like that. Yeah. And it's so different from... Um, you know what I'm I'm used to I don't know everybody there yeah yeah like I go I go out and it's like it's like cheers you know like I walk into spy bar and it's like oh hey I just like you know like (laughs) you know everybody right or or a warehouse party or whatever paradigm about whatever Mm -hmm. um I think it's like that for a lot of us and Mm -hmm. it's great um but it's really nice to also be able to be around electronic music in our own city yeah and be like there's all these other little pockets and scenes yeah and I I I'm glad we're talking about this because I hope mm-hmm. people will hear this and be like, I want to get out and explore that a little yeah, bit more absolutely. because it's like we all kind of get our comfort zone and the events that we go to and, and the mm-hmm. DJs we know yeah. and it's like, but there's more. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I always talk about like there's this big electronic music umbrella, let's just say dance music, right? Yeah. And there's so many different people standing in this own umbrella yeah. and it's like, you can go to that side of the umbrella. Like it's okay. You and know? it's you, fun over there it's too. It's fun over there too. <laughs> like no one's getting rained on. Like yeah. we're all, in, we're all here together. Yeah. I think it's you, what you said is beautiful there. And it's a question that I even think about asking. It's like, what is it like for you when you go to a different place, whether you're DJing or not? Like what's that experience for you, whether it's music related or not? Um, well, I think it, it's interesting as I, so music for me has, my whole life has been something I've experienced in a, like a, I think a tangibly different way, mm-hmm. um, than a lot of people. I, my mom signed me up for, um, violin lessons at like age three or four. Oh, wow. She like went to the library. They didn't have the internet back then, you're mm-hmm. right, you know, um, and researched like, how do you like teach a kid music if they don't <laughs> even know how to read yet? Wow. And there was this Japanese method called Suzuki where you learn classical music by ear. Um, and wow. apparently I just, I responded in this way to, to music. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and she, she wanted to give me that experience, which is just so beautiful. And, um, yeah, music has always just moved me in such a powerful way. Um, and I played like, uh, I started with violin and then piano and clarinet Mm -hmm. and, um, a bunch of other things that I kind of dabbled in. But, um, once I, and I've always loved electronic music, but I've always loved all these other genres of music. Mm -hmm. And, but I didn't really like until I started producing and that kind of became this thing that I wanted to learn. Mm -hmm. Um, what did I really begin to understand kind of the complexity of it? Right. And so I think that if you're a, a producer and you really, you, you've you written music and you know all of the things that go into it, you, you just, you begin to hear everything in a different yeah. way. Mm-hmm. Um, totally. It's like, you just, you just can't ever, you can't unhear it. Like you can't go back to the way it was before. And in some ways it's almost like, I wish I could just have that for a night yeah. because it was a different kind of joy that I Gosh. got from it. And like, sometimes it's, it's, it's very Take analytical. Right now. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. But, um, it's like, um, it's when you are in an environment where you know so many people, which is so beautiful in so many ways, mm-hmm. it's, you or just going out with a bunch of friends or whatever you inevitably get pulled into conversations and that sort of mm-hmm, thing mm-hmm. and it becomes more difficult to really kind of dive into the music and really listen yes and just really listen yeah, absolutely. and not just listen with your mind but listen with your heart and your soul mm-hmm. and just kind of like it becomes a very meditative thing yeah um and so i'm kind of known for um one of the aspects of my hummingbird nature mm-hmm. is that like i do this like hummingbird thing where i'm like with a group of people and i'm just like and I just little circle around and I like just am, am, I'm like I go off and I kind of do my own thing. Yeah. Um, and it's because I like trying to find a little pocket where like I can just kind of tuck myself in and yes. just listen for a while. Oh, um, tuck yourself in. I like that. Yeah. Where'd that name come from then? Um, so um, when I uh, got that first spy bar booking mm-hmm. um, and the next text was like after I was like, yeah, I'm available that day. Like, dude, like, dude my best friend could have been getting married. And I would have been like, yeah, yep, I'm, I'm free. No problem. You could have been getting married. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> totally. Um, and he was like, what should I bill you as? Mm. And then like the next text was like, we're finalizing the flyer in 20 minutes. Oh, you're like, so oh, it was God. Like, it was like basically like, sister, like, 
Let figure me know it out. now, right? <laughs> Unless you want it to be Kelly Richards. And um, and so hummingbirds have been um, this thing in my family for generations. Like one of my earliest memories is being with my parents and my grandparents mm-hmm. in the botanical gardens and walking around like looking for hummingbirds. And there were always all of these hummingbird feeders. I remember my my grandfather like. Every like Sunday morning was the day that like he would or he would like wash the hummingbird feeder because mm-hmm. they would get all sticky and like right. make the syrup and refill it and all of that. It's just like it's always been this thing, um, and I've just always been fascinated with their their energy and their kind mm-hmm. of and uh, also I've been called like my nickname has been Bird from various groups of friends like just really? like little bird like I just yeah. apparently have that energy about me. <laughs> Um, I've been told that I like dance like a hummingbird sometimes like and so um, that's awesome yeah and so when I was just like okay and that and it was funny he came back and he's like yeah yeah I like that like and, and it just it's been one of those things that it was the right choice because it was like a gut instinct because I had to make the decision in the moment which yeah. was a good thing that there was a 20 minute deadline right because I sometimes have a tendency to overthink things I could, have, <laughs> I could have put a lot of unnecessary time and energy into picking a DJ name but I just it was a blessing it had to happen like that you had a timeline yeah it's a beautiful name so it, it was looks... a gut it was a gut instinct and it's it's like it's a metaphor for me in so many ways that's awesome like, and people will come up and they'll be like yeah people will be like is your DJ name hummingbird because of such and such and I'll be mm-hmm. like I hadn't thought of that one. That's really good. <laughs> I'll add it to the bullet points. Yep. That's awesome. Hey, it looks great on a poster, too. Like, just, like, the name, like, I mean, it's, you know, something so, like, normal that we don't think about in our lives, or sometimes it's like, oh, it's right under your nose. And that, to me, like, the name Hummingbird, simple yet elegant. Yeah. You know? And now that I'm meeting you, like, yes, it all makes sense. I love it. People, I love like, it, it suits me. Like, I have people it that I've met through music that have now become some of my closest friends and mm-hmm. they'll still call me like hummingbird sometimes you oh, know, as opposed awesome. to kelly which it's just i love it yeah absolutely it fits you so what exactly got you into electronic music then originally i mean you were playing all these instruments like when did that come in your life especially milwaukee was it something in chicago <laughs> so um it always will find you if it's meant to right so yes. like growing up in wisconsin um not Wisconsin has many beautiful things. It is not a hotbed for electronic music. <laughs> there's, a be- there's a really amazing scene in Milwaukee. Yeah. And the people there, like, do such an awesome job. But, like, yeah. but I mean, I didn't live in downtown Milwaukee. I was, like, <clears throat> out in a... I grew up in a town where people would get up at 4 in the morning and go milk cows. So wow. Very, very rural. And, um... But I always noticed the songs that I would hear and, like, gravitate toward. Mm-hmm. You know, like, let's say I met my aunt and uncles, and they're just playing the radio. Mm-hmm. And I would, it'd be, like, older songs playing, and I would hear, like, Depeche Mode and, the, <laughs> and like, that, all of that. Like, yeah. anything that had that kind of driving 4-4 kick drum mm-hmm. was, like, I loved it. I loved it. it. Yeah. And um, then I was always more of a rock kid, like, mm-hmm. in, like, college and, like, my 20s it was like I would go like I was always at Metro and Shubas and mm-hmm. you know like Lincoln Hall and places nice. like that yeah. but it was the the bands that had that electronic influence and then I also would and 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 then I would I would hear a song somewhere and I'd be like I need to find out what this is yeah. and I would like back then like they still had like Virgin Megastore and you could go listen to music <laughs> and I would be in their yes. electronic import section yes. buying like CDs and I never really went out to clubs but I like digested mm-hmm. the music Mm -hmm. um and then but it wasn't just like kind of the more like house and techno stuff Mm -hmm. but i also really liked more of like the ambient electronic as well so um i would say like boards of canada Mm -hmm. um stuff like that i really really love like the down tempo like ambient cerebral electronic stuff but like stuff like chemical brothers just of course that that's i could listen to them they come up all the time yeah. Well, what's what's so interesting about them is they have such a sound. Yeah. You know it's Chemical Brothers when you hear it. Right. But you can listen to album upon album upon album from mm-hmm. them back to back to back to back and not get sick of it because they explore so many BPM ranges and rhythmic patterns and song structures and emotions and it's just like they're still killing it they're coming to Chicago like in, I think this weekend. I like <laughs> mad respect yeah yeah. That's amazing. Are those some of the artists that still influence you today, too? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And I also love, like, drawing um, from, like, other 
um, other genres. Like, I'm yeah. a huge fan of, like, Nine Inch Nails. Um, and so, like, I love oh, that yes. kind of, like, grit. Trent Reznor's another absolute genius. <laughs> um, and... You know, like, I'm a big Radiohead fan. Um, any Same. music that has piano in it, and you'll hear that in my sets. Like, yes. it's just, like, there's an awesome track, and then some piano, like, stabby piano chords, like, come oh. in. Like, donezo. I love you know? that, too. I love that, too. <laughs> it's so crazy how, like, the, just the piano, like, I had a friend who's very musically talented, an incredible piano player, and he still is, and he would just play anything. Like, he was just so musically talented. We'd say play the Beatles. We'd play... You know, play Nine Inch Nails, play Radiohead. I mean, and he knows music theory. And I would just watch him and just the ranges that he can do when we were in middle school and high school. And I would just sit next to him and watch. And I, me too. In my DJ sets, like, I like to go a little tech and then bring it back to the piano. And yeah. then maybe a different type of piano, you yeah. know? And to, like, feel the ranges, like, when he would play. Shout out Tommy B. I'm sure he's going to listen to this. Yeah. <laughs> Hear the ranges that he would play. And then now kind of feel like how I can progress a set through that, like, here and there. I totally agree with you. Yeah. Piano's the game changer. Yeah. It's something well, everybody loves, too. Well, it's it's the the harmonics of that instrument are so warm and mm-hmm. supportive. You think about yeah. it. Like, that. the energy... Different instruments have different energies. Yes. And I find the piano and the cello to have just this really warm, Deep. supportive, yeah. heart-opening... Yes. Yeah. I totally agree. Oh, man. And you said Radiohead, too. I haven't even talked about that on the show. That's like a low-key favorite brand, band for me. Yeah. Like, 15 Step, that's got to be one of the most crazy, amazing songs of yeah. all time. I have such a, like, love affair with Idiotech. <laughs> it's just this, exactly like, grimy, electronica-y, yeah. like, yeah. <laughs> Radiohead, they change the game. They defy all genres and all odds. Yeah. I and then, just saw Tom York put out like a 30-minute or a 15-minute thing on Netflix. Okay. Have you seen that? It's like an extended I don't watch music. things. I don't it's watch like, TV. I don't know. <laughs> like, like, every so often, I'll get, my best friend will sit me down and we'll like watch something. Yeah. But I didn't even, you know what? I don't even, I didn't watch it, so who am I to talk? But, but you heard about it. I heard about it. So you're it. clearly more keyed into I this reality so. than I am, I so good job. I guess so, yes. I have a TV, so I, I get that far. <laughs> There's that, plants and paintings in front of mine, not kidding. I love that. Honestly, do you. Do you. <laughs> like, do you. <laughs> it was hilarious to hear you talk about social media, too, because, like, I do know what you mean. Like, to put yourself out there, like, and before we were on air, she was talking about how that was kind of something you had to overcome, you know? Do you feel like you have now gotten over that, for lack of a better term, anxiety for putting yourself out there? I think I have in in a way that, like, I, I, I realized that, well, I mean, I guess anything in our lives that we have resistance to, right, mm-hmm. is ultimately that manifests because yeah. there is something within us that we need to encounter, understand, yeah heal and release yeah and i i think for me it was the feeling like i was pushing out on other people something that maybe they didn't want to receive right it's like i'm i i i try to walk gently within the world um that's just you know my nature yeah hummingbird yeah you're not bothering anybody yeah um and and um yeah i think i i have i realized that like the that it's all it really is is just a way of sharing whatever my own truth is mm-hmm. in that in that moment. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not one that likes to kind of stir the pot, mm-hmm. um, and I think one of the reasons that I sometimes kind of shy away from social media is like I don't like like when when there's a post and people are like going at it and there's a lot of kind of negative energy oh, around yeah, I know that. What you mean. Um, I think those sorts of things always. I, I want to just kind of be the one kind of creating positive energy. Yeah. And I realize that, well, I think the energy when I post something, the energy of what I'm seeking to share mm-hmm. comes across. Yeah. And it's, you know, people, you know, will be like, hey, your post the other day, like, you know, like that actually like really made me feel good because of this yeah. and this and this. And so Absolutely. it's like I'll get like little bits of feedback from people that like what I'm saying is actually helping them yeah. in some way. Um, and so I think that's the, um, that's kind of a, a big powerful message mm-hmm. because when we, when we heal ourselves, then in doing so, we also kind of allow others to heal and become 
you know, more aligned with their true authentic selves. Yes, absolutely. By not having to do or say anything to them, but just by letting your own light Mm -hmm. shine brighter, Mm -hmm. everyone else realizes that, like, they get to do the same thing. They can, too. Yeah. I just talked to somebody about And we're all so unique and so different. And just be your unique, different self. That's what you're here to do. (laughs) We're all here yeah, to do that. So true. You don't have to be an artist to do that. Like, no. Everybody is unique and different. Just be that. Yeah. And it, so, like, now that's my approach to amen. social media. I'm going to just be my, be my no weird No holds self. barred. You're hummingbird. <laughs> no matter what yeah. people think. I agree. And, like, I, I try to do that, too. And, like, you know, like, coming into this world, like, or just the, the world of music, you know? Like, I see the cool DJ or I see the person who's creating drama and I'm like, I don't like that. Is that what I'm supposed to do to have success? Because, like, some of these people are big, you know? And it's just like, that is just negative. That is not me. <laughs> I, I Exactly, You yeah. know what I mean? So I was like, I was like, boom. Like, before, like, when I was talking about trying to put myself out there and I was nervous, I was like, I just got to do it. Like, yeah. I'm happiest when I'm doing this and I'm not thinking about other things. And I had a great interview recently and they, they said the same thing in one way or another. And they said, you're doing a disservice to others if you're not being your true self, you know? 100%. And there are so many people who have been in long-term relationships or work or anything like that, and they've been faking it. Yeah. Because that's what they think they're supposed to do mm-hmm. for society, for themselves, for others. And in turn, mm-hmm. they lose track. I think, and I think it's probably fair to say that we've all done that in, at some point in our lives. And when we do that, it's like, people are doing that and they're trying to do the right thing and then yeah. at some point they realize that the right thing is actually being true to themselves yeah and then that's when life starts to open up like a flower i agree well said absolutely that's some deep stuff write that down people <laughs> so i want to get into music your production so obviously you've had some great positive influences around you i mean the, your parents obviously at a young age when did you actually like get your hands on a digital audio workspace um so it was probably about maybe eight years ago. Okay. Um, I thought you were going to say eight years old. I was like, oh, gosh. No, when I started writing music, um, so I composed classical music as a kid, Mm -hmm. and it was, you had a white sheet of paper with staff lines, and you would draw in (laughs) your, your, like, treble or bass clap and your key signature and your time signature, and you would draw in the notes. Terrible. I put the French horn in fifth grade. It was terrible, yeah. (laughs) That honestly scared me. I couldn't do it after that. I was like, this is difficult. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so um, actually I was at a, a rock show at the old Congress Theater with mm-hmm. um, some friends and um, one of them was like an engineer and nerdy like me and he mm-hmm. was like, hey, so my friend Bradley, like shout out to like Eric and Bradley who like um, helped me get into all of this. Um, they, so um, he's like, you like should totally see how like this music is made because it'll like blow your mind. And yeah. he showed me this this YouTube video, which I'm sure you can still find out there. Um, and if anyone's listening that wants to like actually see what it looks like to make a song, mm-hmm. um, so um, he showed me this YouTube video of how Prodigy made the song "Smack My Bitch Up." Nice. And it showed all of the things about how they pulled from loops and samples and did everything. Mm-hmm. And he was then he opened his computer and he was like version of this and right like, we're kind of playing around with this in right basement and so oh, i was like uh count me in yeah 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 and it was like we didn't know what we were doing at <laughs> all and like i had the like i had a musical background but i've never done anything with like guitars or amps or anything mm-hmm. so i'm like googling like what does wet dry effect mean because yeah. only instruments i've ever played there's you didn't plug anything in it was a violin <laughs> it's you know the instrument, it was yeah. a classical violin or the right. piano right so right yeah so that was it was literally like we, like, were three people just, like, basically wandering around in circles trying to, like, right. figure things out together. Right. Um, for, and that was, we probably worked on that together for about six months, and then it kind of became more of a solo um, endeavor for me, which sure. was a lot of just figure it out. Yeah, hard work. YouTube University type stuff? Yeah. Yeah, of course. Did you have any mentors along the way, um, Yeah, you know, um, Brandon Murphy, who's actually... Um, He's an awesome Ableton instructor. Mm -hmm. Um, I did some sessions with him when I first started kind of like working on my own just, um, and he's in Detroit now, but like if anybody in Detroit is looking for someone who's an expert in Ableton, um, Brandon Murphy's awesome, amazing guy too. Um, But yeah, it was like he would show me stuff and it would be like, all right, I'm gonna go home and like just (laughs) work awesome. on this it's like if you produce you know it's like it's there's no there's no easy way to learn it yeah the only way to learn it is to just 
roll up your sleeves and get in there and do it. And you've got to want to do it bad enough yeah. because there's a, there's a certain point where like you've learned enough and you kind of hit this like, Oh, I can actually kind of do this now, <laughs> it's possible. but there's a decent amount of effort involved right. to kind of getting to that point. Right. You just need to stick it out. So and true. anyone can do it if they want to. You don't need a musical background. Some of the greatest producers have never picked up a musical instrument in their lives, you know? Fact. I mean, these days you can do it on your laptop in your room, in the airport, you know? Like yeah. anywhere, at work, at lunch, mm -hmm. you know? It's, it's unbelievable the age we're living in where anybody can really get into their passion. Mm -hmm. It didn't used to be like that. I mean, our parents' generation, like you said, similar for me. My dad is astonished at the mediums that the podcast is released on every time. <laughs> what is Spotify? What do I do now? Apple, iTunes. Like, I went home, like, a few months ago. It was actually, it was sometime around uh, when I went home for, like, the holidays during Christmas. And he, like, calls me into his office and I'm like, well, what is this about, Dad? He's like, sit down. And he turns on the TV in his office, and it's like iTunes podcast, Sherman the Booth. He's like, this is episode three. We're going to listen to this right now. We're going to hear the differences. And I'm like, is this not amazing to you, Dad? He's like, I can't believe it. I have it on the TV. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. Like, they can kind of do that for our parents. And yeah. Like, they can, they're just like, their minds are kind of blown they're by blown. the things that we're doing. It's They're awesome. blown, and they're, they're so supportive. I mean, I always mention my dad because he is so supportive. He grades every episode like always very well he's you know he does he's like i don't get this i'd like a glossary if i can i'm like no glossary daddy the only person that oh if you start this. talking in like production terms oh we go like, deep yeah, yeah i go deep sometimes yeah. he does not follow like you know we go into plugins and stuff he's like i, I lost everything there i don't know you what's lost going me on. at envelope modulation. yeah exactly <laughs> i lost him at wet dry exactly yeah. Uh, but that's amazing. So like, what's your process like these days? I mean, are you still, how often are you working in the studio with your full-time job? Yeah. You know, um, it's, it's like, it's like the maintaining the balance yeah. is like just, a. Uh, everybody has that right in their mm -hmm. lives. And, um, it's, it's like the, I have more time in the studio when I'm kind of playing fewer gigs. Right. Yeah. And mm -hmm. so summer tends to be this time where there's just, they're, tend to be a lot more gigs. Um, yeah, of course. Um, and it's summer, and so and it's it's fun to play them. Doesn't it feel like we have um, no time in Chicago in the summer if it's nice out? I'm like, I, I have things to do, but I, I got to go outside. Like, I, I, this you have to be outside. Yeah. Right? It's so, <laughs> so, so funny. Um, but yeah, so it's like a, um, like a week, couple weeks ago, is like, I hadn't really been in my kind of regular rhythm and routine because I like have been so focused on like gigs and mm -hmm. and I always want to like pull in new music for of my course. gigs. You know, it's Huge. like so that's I'm very selective about the songs that I play and all of that. Mm -hmm. And so for me, like prepping for for gigs is something that I always put considerable time into. And yeah. people said to me like, "Well, you actually put a lot more time into that maybe than most people." Well, yeah. But this is how we do it. Yeah. It feels right to me. Yeah, um, But absolutely. yeah, so I've been back in the studio. I've got like three tracks that are in kind of various stages of completion. Sure. And um, yeah, I was working on one this morning. It felt so good. It felt so good to be back into it. And um, I have a couple of friends who've offered to like lend me some of their gear mm -hmm. um, because I'm, I'm looking to kind of expand my studio. I actually need to rebuild. Um, I'm working on a really, really old computer and she has been so good to me, <laughs> but she is limping along. It is, yeah. I'm not even going to tell you She's how long it takes doggy. me yeah. to open an Ableton project file. Oh, it's, 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 um, but it opens. It's, Knock on wood. Okay. It opened this morning. Okay. But we it got hung up for quite a while, long enough for me to make a couple pieces of toast. So Okay, that's my timer. I got you. Wow, a couple pieces of toast. That's like amazing. I made one and I wanted more and then right. I made a second and you're one. Like, oh, so, um, okay. Well, all right. We're well, still got the rolling beach ball of death. We're just gonna let that You know Oh. So it's a Mac. I yeah, no, yeah. I, yeah. Be so that. that's my my next step is and I, I've been putting it off because mm -hmm. of the I know what that it's a time intensive effort to kind of yeah. shift everything over to a new machine yeah. and not wanting to feel like I needed to do all this like technical stuff which I'm like capable of doing but it doesn't give me nearly the yeah like I'm terrible at like computer maintenance like Hector Demara if he listens to this he's always like well you have to make time <laughs> to like maintain your system and do all of yeah, the like it's system true, maintenance so things. True. If I've got time to work on music, can you damn do. sure I'm going to be writing it and not doing that stuff. Yeah, I totally <laughs> but I, agree. So I, I, it's maybe the, yeah, so. You have to. And it's crazy in the you know, creative space, creative mindset where, like, you, you feel like 
it's it's the difference between the heart and the head where I feel like music creation comes from the heart and the head is like you need to do this because you got to get the music out there blah 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 and then like if you sit down in the studio and this has happened to me too many times where I'm like I got some free time maybe this isn't exactly what I want to be doing right now but I should do it and then I'm not creative right and it's like such specific times that you never know when it's going to happen when an idea comes I mean it's the brain so like I I don't even think the brain knows when it's ready, no, right? No, because inspiration actually comes from, you know, outside of you. You know, it's yeah. not like you can do things to get yourself into a creative headspace. Meditation is amazing for that. Mm -hmm. um, so is physical activity. I mean, we all have had that, like, yeah. like, when you're out for a run or a bike ride and you're just like... Oh, I love it. Like, if I could write music while riding my bike outdoors, <laughs> you know what I would, music oh, is I would come God. up with? Because that, that just, it just, it, yeah. something about that gets it flowing. It's true. Um, and I think some people really actually enjoy the technical aspects of music production. Like, they actually enjoy setting up a new computer and all of that. Yeah. And for me, it's more of one of those things that I'm capable of doing, mm -hmm. but I... I don't detest it, but it's like in that general zip code of yeah. emotion. Um, so <laughs> you're speaking my language right now. I, I totally agree. And like I, I sometimes like for someone who loves music so much, I will go on a run for as long as I can with no headphones and just clear my mind. Yep. And ride my bike back, and I'm just like, all of a sudden in this crazy clear headspace. Yeah. And I feel like, oh yeah, what can I do right now? You right. Know? And yeah, it's just it's this awesome. unbelievable feeling. There have been times I've gotten back from, like, the gym or, like, a bike ride or whatever, and mm -hmm. I've been like, okay, you're flipping your stuff on, like, the studio on yeah. now yeah. because I'm worried that I'm going to lose yeah. that. Like, because when you have <laughs> that, like, inspiration and you're yeah. like, ooh, there's something that wants to come out. Yeah. Like, I didn't want to lose it in the time it was going to take me to, like, hop through the shower. So I was like, we're just going to do this right now. I know. <laughs> I totally agree. I was just driving with Tony the other day, and I go, oh, I got a great idea for a tech house sample. I don't even remember it now. God damn it. Yeah. It's, it's wild. Do you use the voice recorder on your phone? Yes, I was just going to actually bring that, is, that up. Oh, My friend yeah. who's a very talented young producer, he goes, listen, if you've got anything in your head, you bring up the voice memo and you sing it. Don't, don't, doesn't matter where you are, you just do it. And I, need I to do, do that all the time and I'm walking down the street literally like singing and... It's like when you wake up in a dream and you're like, wow, what a crazy dream. And then you're like, I should write this down. And then in that split second, you go to the next thing and you forget. Right. And that's when, like, the greatest ideas happen in that split second. And yeah. you just got to, like, hold on to it somehow. Yeah. And that's something that, and that's why I think that meditation is so helpful mm -hmm. with creativity. Because what it does is it really grounds you in the present. And so yes. think about what you just said about mm -hmm. how it's like, and you're on to the next thing. And the mind starts thinking in kind of that future path. What do I have to do? What am I going to do yep. next? I need to go to the fridge and get a glass of water. Yep. And then that's lost. Mm -hmm. And meditation keeps you more in that present moment yeah and it's like when you're grounded in the present moment like that's always where the magic happens like that's where you have the great creative ideas that's where you have the amazing connected experiences with yeah. other people yeah you need to write a book if you aren't already <laughs> like for real <laughs> I'm, I'm living in the moment right now, okay? okay i'm good, I promise good. i'm living in the moment <laughs> now so for someone who said they're very specific about your music taste preferences yeah but you also mentioned how your sets are something that you feel with the crowd so yeah. for someone who does maybe plan out a set and prepare what's it like for you once you get on the decks like talk us through that process so what i yeah so um so it's not that i, I plan out sets it's that mm -hmm. i like so the way i prepare for gigs mm -hmm. is um when I say I'm very particular about things, I'm very particular about the songs that I select. Sure, of course. Right? And we all are, yeah. right? Um, and and I will, so for like a, an hour-long set, I'll usually have like 60 to 70 tracks. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, I, and I won't know what I'm going to play first. Right. And I just go in there and I feel it out and I pick it in the moment. Mm -hmm. So there's nothing, There's for me, there's nothing that can be planned um, unless sometimes I know that I'll be like like I want to start a set with a track that has a really cool intro that you kind of can't mix into yeah absolutely. right like it's like some of those there's just a cool so cool songs like that and you're like mm -hmm. I want people to hear this intro so you know you're not going to mix into the person that you're following right right and you play right. that song so sometimes you know where you're starting yeah um but it for me is like let me explain this so I when I first started DJing I didn't realize that this was kind of really we're going to get a little weird here. Let's do it. Um, I didn't really realize that this was what I was doing. Um, people would ask me, like, well, you know, when you, like, 
look at the dance floor and you see what people are doing and if they're vibing and this and that. And I was like, <laughs> I realized like I didn't really like even see people. Yeah. I just felt their energy. Right. And it's that I don't necessarily, the input that I get from the dance floor mm -hmm doesn't come from any of kind of the normal five senses. Yeah. It comes through me energetically. Um, mm. And um, there's an amazing healer that I work with um, who's worked with a ton of people um, in the music industry. And I was, she was asking me some questions and I was explaining like that. And she was like, oh, well, and she kind of explained, it helped me understand that it was actually like I was absorbing information from the dance floor energetically wow. and that's how I know what to play next it's like huh. there's like it's like a you could think of it as kind of the subconscious mind or whatever but it's like and I, I, I imagine like you know there are a lot of people that you just it's like it's all by feeling yeah um it's all by feeling and it's like I, it's almost like this like you kind of just get lo I get locked into this just like energy and it's like I think a lot of DJs can probably relate to this. It's the feeling of like, you're just a vessel. Mm -hmm. Something else is playing the music. Like this yeah. physical body is just this like robotic <laughs> machine that's like working the mixer and the CDJs. Yeah, wow. Um, but I yeah, love so that. that's the, it's like the, but then it's also like it's a, it's not just absorbing that information. It's also, um, Cause it's like a dance, right? The DJ and the dance floor, yeah. they're like dance partners. Yeah. Think about it. Like they're, you're like, you're like, like doing it like this, like magnificent ballroom dance together. Right. Cause if <laughs> yeah. the DJ was just letting the in information from the dance floor influence everything, mm -hmm. like the DJ is also kind of like directing it as well. Like, okay. So you guys, it's like, Oh, you guys are giving me that. Like, all right, well here, I'm going to give you this. <laughs> And then it's this like push and yeah. pull, right? And it's funny because people that like know me will know when I'm getting ready to do that because apparently there's like something I do with my face that's kind of like really yeah you guys no are ready way for this. like it just it's like I just I I know the energy of where everyone's at and then it's like you have this like oh this is gonna be exactly what will it's like a it's like the a volley you know volley back and forth sometimes mm -hmm. too you know of Gosh. like. I don't know if that makes sense. It's like a... It does. It's it a does. very abstract thing that happens inside of me that I'm trying to articulate. So hopefully that makes sense. I hope that all DJs can experience yeah. something like that. Do you think that DJs outside of house and techno can get an experience like that too? Or do you think by the genre, maybe it gives you a different feeling just because of how it's made? Um, that's a really interesting question. Um, I think house and techno is probably more it lends itself to that better mm -hmm. because of it's what I'll call a hypnotic nature. Yes. Um, so um, one of one kind of meditative practice uh, that I sometimes use that helps me to go very deep is what's called kind of shamanic drumming. And it's just, you can find these meditations online or mm -hmm. buy a drum and do it yourself, um, but it's just a repeated drumming. Mm -hmm. And it's something that has been happening in our world for millennia right um, because it's this repeated repetitive drum pattern hmm. that will induce this meditative state this wow. is what like the medicine men in the tribes would do is what native Am i have native american heritage part native american like that's like the drum circles that is it it, it kind of gets you into this and I, f I have goosebumps as I'm saying that, which is always kind of the universe like lighting me up yeah, and being like, you yep, you're yep. onto something, girl. Yep, yep. Um, and, and so it's that, that repetitive drum pattern and the fact that a lot of house and techno, um, especially the underground stuff, um, even it doesn't tend to have these huge swells and drops mm -hmm. um, where like, you know, it's like some music has these, like the arrangement just goes like way up and way down and there's yep. all this. It tends to be a little more kind of steady state. Yep. Uh, and I think that it kind of, that lends itself to maybe more connected and transcendent experiences. Yeah. Um, not that those, of course, don't and can't happen elsewhere. Sure. But just the kind of the repetitive rhythmic, I think it's just kind of like set up sonically to. So true. I love that. I think you're so right. I really, I personally, from like going through different loves of electronic music and yeah. starting from 
you know, honestly, I think I think the first electronic song I heard, which is interestingly enough, was actually like a Dead Mouse Brazil. Yeah. Uh, which is a very deep yeah. transcendental song. And yeah. then kind of like graduating up from there and then going down up and down and up yeah. and down and, you know, here interviewing somebody like yourself and really relating to that and truly being on the same team as you there. Yeah. I think that only in-house and techno. And that's why I think people need to experience it live too. Yeah. Because a lot of people say, oh, I love house. Let me put it on my little Bose speaker or like in my headphones. And you got to go to this shit live. And you got to feel the energy and, and you got to see the, the DJ. Room. There's something different. There's something different. And if you haven't gone, you won't understand. So try. And that goes back to one of the other questions. Like maybe people fear of a new experience. Like, oh, I won't like that. There's no way. So many people that I brought for the first time come back and they say, what the hell was that? We got to do that again. Mm -hmm. I said to one of my friends in movement, I go, you're going to start searching for it, man. Like mm -hmm. he was like, yeah, you're right. Yeah. Like Tuesday after he's like, "We need. I need it. What's what going if, on? What if my favorite experiences to have had DJing and it's happened numerous times um, is when I've had people come up to me mm -hmm. and say, what? kind of music is this <laughs> i really wow, like it wow that's awesome yeah yes and where do i find more of it yeah that's yeah god that's you serving others right there right like yeah. there used to be this amazing little place called rodan on milwaukee mm -hmm. in wicker park um mm -hmm. and it closed a few years ago um but there was always house music there and they had great food and great cocktails and mm -hmm. everybody i think in the community that lived in this neck of the woods loved that place sure and but it got a lot of just street traffic from just like wicker park and that would happen to me there a lot oh i bet yeah and That's then awesome. like i did like i played a benefit for dance for life which is like a fundraiser for the professional dance community yeah, i had that happened to had that happen to me there last year a couple people are like what is this <laughs> and you're just like um you know not the dancers obviously they were yeah. dancers. oh yeah dancers i think yeah kind of know have heard, heard a lot of music yes <laughs> of course that's awesome what, what a special commentary that was right there that was that was amazing i love that um so with all of your hard work comes great reward. I mean, you've had some amazing opportunities to play at Smart Bar, Sm Spy Bar, Paradigm Events, of course. It's only getting bigger for you. Names like Art Department, Koyu, Lee Foss, Kolsch, you've all been in these lineups, direct support, opening, closing, whatever. What is your favorite part about performing for these where people maybe come for the headliner and then you have the opportunity to really guide them into that moment? Um, I think the, so... I do love the analytic exercise of uh, like a direct support set yeah. because I, I love the kind of the architecture of, of, of sound and how all the pieces fit together. Mm -hmm. And um, I love being able to do what I do in a way mm -hmm. that kind of gives people the maximum type of experience for mm -hmm. their night, right. right? Because we've all... But it, you know, it, it's like the, the, it's the music the entire way through the night for an electronic show that really has such impact. Yeah. Uh, and there's some people in Chicago that are just like amazing at kind of programming events in the right way. Yeah. Um, you know, it's like RJ does a wonderful job with that. John yeah. Crowley with Paradigm. I mean, yeah. it, there's always, there's just s such a thoughtfulness into, I mean, I mean, and, and I mean, I could go on and on, you know, with rituals. Yeah. It's like, there's, uh, there's, I mean, so many people that really understand this art. Mm -hmm. um, and so I love just playing that role. Um, I also just really like being able to surprise people, right? Because mm -hmm. it's it's playing those direct support sets is fun because a lot of people do come out for the headliner. Yeah. And, um, I mean, it's just freaking fun to get done playing <laughs> and have people come up and be like, who are you? Yeah. And, you know, to be able to connect with them and, and know that, like, music had like an impact on them and I've you know like made a lot of awesome new friends that way but yeah it's it's really nice to kind of like be able to see people be like you know just like not knowing who you are but yeah. like really glad that they're experiencing that I think any of us that perform yeah. you know whether music or any other way that's just a there's a special joy to that that comes from whatever you're doing when you're performing is the thing that fills your heart up with so much joy. And mm -hmm. you perform in that particular art yeah. because that is what gives you the most joy out yeah. of anything. And your goal as a performer 
is to be able to have someone else be able to experience that same type of joy. Mm -hmm. And to know that you've shared what it is the best feeling of being alive with another (laughs) human. Like it really, I mean, it just doesn't get any better. I know. And the the little moments of, you know, obviously this is an, a creative industry where there's a lot of moments of self-doubt, you know, like it could be like attractive, you're like, I'm not, I don't know if I feel good about this or a transition. Mm-hmm. And then somebody comes up and reassures you without knowing that you were going through this internally. <laughs> yeah, that's happening. Hey, before. that was awesome. <laughs> oh, that was not awesome. Right? <laughs> but thank you, yeah, you know, I'm yeah. like, those are the little things that keep you going when there can be such huge setbacks yeah. internally. Yeah. But like you said, like the things that you do, like meditation is a great way I agree like just to relax and get through those things yeah. but like when people compliment you without you seeking it or like you know whatever yeah. those are the things that keep you going yeah and I love that that's special but I mean those are some just a few of the names and you're too humble to tell them but and him one of the biggest acts in the world told Spy Bar that you were in a perfect opener and that's amazing. I mean, like you said, those guys didn't have to do that. And you find that in the music scene, house and techno specifically, like you said, and I agree with you on that regard. So I just want to commend you and acknowledge you for something like that, too. Well, I don't know if they said it was perfect, but they, they said that. Well, I was that's perfect. what they meant. That's what they <laughs> Thank meant. Thank you. You did a great um, job. Yeah, I mean, um, that's upper echelon. I mean, this is Chicago. These are some of the mm-hmm. biggest acts. So, you know, I mean, I just want to tell you, I think that's awesome. Thank you. Very cool. Thank you. Um, and going off that too, I mean, the Chicago underground scene, you, you mentioned rituals. Mm-hmm. I mean, the curation of these events and the work that goes in the back end. I mean, you were talking about Rami setting up air conditioning units. I didn't even think about something like that, you know? That dude works so hard. Yeah. We, so hard. And an event show, I mean, the, did you, you played at the one at the Good Space? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, the Soul Button Show. I was out of town, but we saw the pictures, and I had, Such an amazing I was at the Good event. Space later, and they were talking about it. I mean, it was just like, it was, that's crazy. Like, that is amazing. And my question for you is, like, what is your favorite part about being involved in this scene here, musically and socially and spiritually, whatever connects with you? Um, I think it is that... I feel music is one of our most powerful tools Mm -hmm. as human beings Mm -hmm. to heal and connect and grow both individually and like as a collective. Yeah. Um, Think about it. I mean, there's what, what else is there that is something that we can't see or touch or really explain, but like it touches us Mm -hmm. in such a way that makes us feel all of these things that, and it's literally just a sound, right? It's like, yeah. it's kind of like magic in a way. <laughs> it's just a sound, yeah. It's, but it's, it, 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 it has such a magical impact. And so it's, it's that, that like, it's, it's, I don't know, it's the, the essence of everything for me is, is music and what it does for all of us. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, it gets us through our darkest days. It's there to accompany us <laughs> when we're like having those shining moments of life. It's yeah. the conduit for us meeting so many amazing people. Think about like yeah. how many of your best friends probably <laughs> you met because of music, right? And so the community in Chicago is amazing. Um, and um, actually, one of my like one of my social media posts that I made recently is like they always kind of come where I'm like, oh, I just I'm feeling this. I feel like I really need to say this. And it like, was just <laughs> about the collaborative nature that I'm seeing in the scene now mm-hmm. in the city of Chicago. That uh, it just really seems to be really growing. Um, Absolutely. And just different groups coming up and and you know, kind of like coming out of the woodwork and and throwing amazing events and then seeing them collaborating with other groups that have been around for a longer period of time and just this general energy of like, just supportive collaborative energy. Mm -hmm. And that's how like you reach the top is together. Yes, amen. You know, RJ said something very similar, of course. Your, your male counterpart, so to speak, right? Yeah. You, you, guys, you guys said something very similar, and I agree with you. I mean, the collectives here are all coming together, and it's a team yeah. game. That's something that I have always said. Like, we can't, you can't get there by yourself. Mm-hmm. And with everyone else, you want everyone there who helped you along the way to be there with you. Mm-hmm. And there's, it, that's what I've noticed in Chicago from people I've interviewed from not Chicago, you know, and experienced my own in New York and Los Angeles and all over the world, too. Chicago is really that Midwest feel here. 
you know, yeah. the guy from Indiana, yeah. the girl from Wisconsin. Yeah. We all come here it's together. It's like people, people think people from Chicago are nice and go to like yeah. Wisconsin or Indiana. They don't even know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like Canada in those places. Sorry. Sorry. You know, <laughs> but it's, it's crazy because all these people are here in this scene. Like, a very few. I can't even think of anyone, actually, that I wouldn't, haven't already met and now good friends with or don't want to meet because of what I've heard about them. You know, yeah. you're a great example of that. Like, you've come up many times, you know, in such a positive way. And so many other people just compliment each other. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, we just like are like just dishing out compliments. And it's mm -hmm. just like so genuine. It's not just like trying to climb any sort of social ladder. Yeah. But it's all from the heart. And that's my favorite part about Chicago is like, it is the Midwest still. You know, it's the heart of the Midwest. Yeah. And it's such a huge city where so many things can happen and people can collaborate. And DJs from all over the world want to come in and experience for themselves. Yeah, it's it's something that's really cool, like having been in Europe and like, um, you know, like the first time I went over to ADE and like I was at the actual, the conference. Oh, how was that, um, this, It was really cool. I think it was like 2015. Um, and I was just in one of the like music production seminars. Um, I was talking to a bunch of guys that were in there and they were like all like, oh, you're from Chicago? And there was just this level <laughs> of respect. Really? That's it awesome. It was really cool. And it was literally, anytime I said I was from Chicago, it was just this like, they're like, you know, because this is where yeah. it all started. Yeah. And even though, like, Chicago hasn't necessarily been moving and shaking on the international scene, like, you know, maybe cities like, you know, Berlin and, like, London yeah, and places like that that are, like, a little more active, um, there's a there's just a level of love and respect for Chicago. And mm -hmm. so I just wanted to say that because True. everyone from Chicago should know that. Yeah. That, like, there's just this, like, oh, Chicago. I know. Like, it's you true. get to live there. It's like know? Atlanta to some people, right? Yeah. It is. It is. I, I totally agree with you. I feel very humbled and honored to be able to say that. Not only I live in Chicago, but I'm part of the music scene here. Mm -hmm. I love that. Um, what's been a, a personal or professional obstacle you've overcome since you've gotten into the music industry, and how would you get through it? Um, I think it's interesting because one of the <laughs> – the um, we touched a little bit on it earlier with kind of social media. Yeah, um, sure. And but music was something that I loved so much mm -hmm. that I was willing to do things that I wouldn't have maybe pushed myself to do mm -hmm. otherwise. Mm -hmm. um, so you know, just like I'm not someone who will go up and talk to someone um, in a like that I don't know that's really really hard for right. me and people meet me they're they sometimes are kind of surprised to hear that because I can you know have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with, with someone, anybody but like to actually go up and talk to someone I don't know mm -hmm. um and um and then sometimes even like people coming up to me and talking to me sometimes you know like I'm just and and so getting kind of over that, it was also um, really, really tough for me at first to be um, up on, like, in the spotlight, like, yeah. behind the, the, like, the DJ booth. Yeah. And, like, when I was in high school and I performed in musicals and they would, like, try to offer me solos, I would decline them. Really? Yeah, because I didn't want the spotlight on wow. me like that. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I remember the first time I played at the Old Castle. Mm -hmm. And you're like up on a stage and it's all white and there's yeah, all I've seen these pictures. lights. <laughs> oh my gosh. I opened for RJ and it was a fair play show and it was funny because he like in like brotherly fashion, like he came up at one point in like the middle of my set and he was like, Damn, you're nervous. And I'm like, Yeah, I am. Yeah. And he's like it's laughing at funny. you. Yeah, yeah, he was just like this, like he's like, It's yeah. cute. Like, you're so and I'm like, go back. Oh, over there. Here, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, so, um, yeah. Yeah, he thought it was really funny, and I did it so much, but obviously I can laugh about it now. Right. But yeah, so it was getting over, like, things like that that just really yeah. were really hard, and I guess I'm glad I'm saying that because maybe there's somebody out there listening that's just like, mm -hmm. oh, I really love DJing, but I, like, only, like, you know, the idea of doing it in front of people is terrifying. So mm -hmm. I've got decks and I do it in my house and maybe for a couple of close friends, but I could never do it. I could never do it at Spy Bar or right. never do it at a festival. Right. It, it's, yeah, you can. You can. You can. It's just 
the only thing holding you back is 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 fear. Yeah. And that's never going to serve you. So figure out where that comes from and like let that shit go because yeah. like it feels so amazing to be up there sharing the joy of music with people. You got to face that fear. Like that's a cliche yeah. saying, but it is true. And it's so worth it. It's so worth it. It can be really hard in the moment, but like once you get on the other side of it, yeah. you're so proud of yourself. <laughs> like I'm so proud of myself for yeah. like facing that fear, right? It's like such a if it was just feeling. something that I like I started de- I DJing because I like loved being up there, then I wouldn't like get to have that awesome feeling of being yeah. like I overcame that. Absolutely. Wow. That was beautiful. I like that. Um, what's what's next for you the rest of 2019 and 2020? Um, it's a new decade coming. I know, I know, I know. And if you're into the spiritual stuff, it's also a new galactic year. Oh shit! Yeah, and that like sounds a, way cooler. And like a new cycle. <laughs> yeah. Um, a new thirteen thousand year cycle. So. Hell yes! I'm definitely saying it. That that sounds way better than a new decade. <laughs> <laughs> what did you say? A new galactic year. New galactic year and a new thirteen thousand year cycle. So there's yes. um so regardless of of of. Everybody thinks differently about these things, but yeah. um, there's just an energy of kind of change and transformation mm-hmm. um, coming. Um, and I'm personally really excited to kind of take that into the studio um, awesome. and, and really kind of write some interesting music. Um, I've also got some um, ideas for things that I kind of want to bring to Chicago um, musically that um, maybe we haven't seen before. So that's kind of a stay tuned thing, but, okay. um, but yeah, I just, there, there, I think, um, even more experiences with music that, that we can have together. Mm-hmm. So that's beautiful. That's beautiful. Well, you have so many amazing things coming up too. Where can we find you on social media? Um, on Facebook at, uh, hummingbird.beats, mm-hmm. uh, on SoundCloud at hummingbird underscore DJ and on Instagram at hummingbird.dj. I love it. That's awesome. Well, Kelly, Hummingbird. I'm going to call you Hummingbird now, honestly. Great. Okay? Do it. I All love right. it. I love it. Thank you so much for coming on the show. This is awesome.